and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie, I'm an illustrator, graphic designer, animator, and you may be wondering why I'm wearing earmuffs right now. I don't really have a good reason other than I just wanted to slay. And that's it. Also, can we take time to appreciate I decorated my microphone a little bit? Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I illustrate my very first children's book. Now, in my last video, I showed you how I did my character designs. They came up pretty fun, pretty good. I like a lot of them. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I draw everything else. Initial sketches, my final sketches, my final color, my background painting, my layout, everything. I'm going to be doing everything in this video. Um, it might be kind of a lengthy video, but Hopefully it's fine. So let's begin. Thumbnails. So something I learned as an artist is the importance of thumbnails. Over here at BB Park, we love a thumbnail. They're so important, they're so special. The more thumbnails you have, the better. Because when you wanna plan out your story, it's super great to just organize things, you can switch them around, they can be rough, they should be rough. Just so you get an idea of like the beats of the story and where things need to be placed. So let's make our thumbnails. Thumbnails. So I'm gonna be using the PDF that I made before to just figure out how many pages I have. I like to number all of my thumbnails to just stay organized and make sure that I'm keeping on track. I don't really bring in any of the text. I kind of just write it in this little red line you see here. Remember how I said all the drawings should be really simple and sloppy? I meant it. As long as you understand what you're drawing, that's all that matters. This blue line that I'm drawing here is going to represent where the actual coloring is going to be. This is all subject to change obviously when I start drawing, but a majority of my pages are going to be fully white with little silhouette illustrations of scenes and characters. It really helps to have an idea in your mind of what each page would look like before you start illustrating so that you could do the thumbnails really quick and really simply. See look, I'm drawing trees right now, they're just lines, you don't have to go crazy. And with that, all the thumbnails are done. It's time to get to the fun part of sketches. Some people really love to put a lot of work and effort into their sketches. I, however, am not one of those people. In fact, I think sketching is one of my least favorite parts about starting an illustration. I think I prefer more of like the painting aspect and big shapes and just whittling them down. I always felt like sketches give me kind of a general idea when it comes to actually painting and shading. I don't really need them to be super accurate. Uh, I kind of clean it all up after I've painted it. Although sketching is really my least favorite part of the process, it does get me really excited for when I go in there and do the final coloring and layout. Like I'm really excited to go in and start painting this monster beach. I don't really have a color palette set on it yet. I think all the other pages I have a pretty good idea, but for the beach itself, I think I'm gonna get a little experimental, I'm gonna do a little research. I also don't know what colors I want for the forest, I am debating between a very colorful forest or a very muted forest. Alright, and all my sketches are done! Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, sketches are done, layout is done, text has been tweaked, and I think we're finally ready for my favorite part of the process, color! Now color is really important to children's books because it could be the difference between a child picking up a book or putting down a book. I know when I go to the library, I try to get a lot of children's books, and obviously I'm not a child, so what appeals to me is not going to appeal to a child, but I do keep in mind what I would have liked when I was young. And for me, there were some books that definitely did not appeal to me because of the way it looked, the illustrations, the colors, it was just not my vibe. I mean, just take a look at some of the most popular children's books right now. The colors are enticing, they go really well with the story, they're really attractive to the reader. So that's something we wanna keep in mind for sure when we start coloring our pages. I'm gonna make sure that I do my best to color this perfectly so that the emotions in it and the message in it could all gel together and make one big beautiful thing. Okay. Coloring, coloring, we are finally coloring. So the first page is gonna be Brooklyn in her room at night. Her parents are tucking her in. I'm not so great at lighting. I really struggle with lighting. A lot of the drawing process will be trial and error, but that's okay. I can always come back to it later. 
Let's move on to Candy City. My gosh, when I tell you that Candy City took me the longest, which I anticipated, I figured because of how much detail and objects are actually in this picture, it was gonna take me a long time. But despite that, I really enjoyed it. I really think it's cute and I love how it turned out. This is another one of my favorite pages because it's so simple. I just love the three little objects. I think they're very cute. And the candy parade. Okay, so I love the candy parade. I initially had the idea to put a full background behind these candies, but when I started drawing the candies, I realized that the contrast between them and the white background is just so cute and it really makes them pop, so I decided to leave it. Now, I don't think I ever mentioned what program I used to do all my illustrations. I use Clip Studio Paint. Um, I initially was not a huge fan of it because I thought it was too overwhelming and I had just come from using Procreate all my life on my iPad, but unfortunately Procreate is not supported by desktop. So when I got my Wacom tablet, I was like, oh, I need to transition to something that I can actually use. And Clip Studio Paint was kind of the best option to me. Um, I really love it now that I know how to work it. In fact, I don't actually use all of the assets that are in there. So if you're interested in trying it, I'd suggest just give it a shot, see how it works for you. So one creative decision that I made when trying to format this book is uh, deciding to put a lot of white background against characters. I wanted Brooklyn's transition from one land to another to kind of evoke that. It's vast, it's a void, anything's possible. Um, I was heavily inspired by that one episode of Spongebob where Squidward is in the void and only interacts with a few colored objects. Yes, I make a Spongebob reference in every video. No, I will not stop. So when I was initially planning this part, it didn't occur to me that Brooklyn wouldn't voluntarily walk onto a beach called Monsters Beach. So I figured that I would hide the fact that it's a Monsters Beach with this little normal sign, you know? Almost as if someone's tricked her into walking into a beach full of monsters. My initial color palette for the Monsters Beach was pretty muted primary colors until I saw this super cute picture on Pinterest. It inspired me so much. I was like, oh, it would be so cute to have a little sunset and all the monsters are playing on the beach. Very serious, but yet very colorful. I like how I challenge myself again to do lighting, um, but I think this one came out a lot better than some of the darker pages. I also love how much you can see the actual sketching and texture that I put in the sky and the water and the sand. I decided to illustrate a couple of these adjectives. I was originally going to just leave them as text, but I thought it would just be more fun to play around with the adjectives and make them individual to the actual monsters. I also love drawing this little monster. He is my favorite. Out of any other character in this book, he is number one. I should really name him. And I think he might be everyone's favorite character as well. So cute, this little coconut, his teeth. I think the benefit of having a lot of white background pages is to not only give you a break from reading in between fully illustrated pages, but gives you a break from actually drawing them too. So now we get into the scary dark forest. So initially I had this purely as purple and green, but I decided since it's sunset on the beach, why not just turn that into night? So there will be a transition from the purple reddish color of the sky to a fully dark purple, green, more muted color palette. Now my fear with these pages is that they're a bit too dark and I'm not sure how well that'll show up printed. Dark colors don't really print that well. Um, they can often look very muddy. So I might have to go back in here when I'm all finished and adjust the levels and the light in the contrast to make sure that you can see it and you don't lose any of the detail. So I'm gonna be honest with y'all, after the Monster Beach, I was tired. My whole mind, body, and spirit was tired. I couldn't wait to finish this book and I was really dreading the final pages. Even though they are not fully illustrated pages, um, I was still like dreading the final pages. When you're running on empty, like every little thing seems like a huge task. So yeah, I'm pretty burnt out by that stage. Um, I really think I should have just taken a break, but I am on a imaginary schedule, so I don't have that time. Thankfully, the last few pages are very simple, so I can just morph this bed into different angles. I don't have to keep drawing a completely new bed. But I think what was giving me the most anxiety is because I knew I was going to get into the hardest page of this entire book for me, the 29th page. Now, this page has been a struggle for me ever since its conception because I don't actually know if it makes sense. So it's supposed to represent Brooklyn seeing her bed, going under the bed because the bed is a portal, going on top of it, and then 
going back to sleep in her own room. I don't really know if this conveys that, um, so I might have to revisit this a little later, uh, but I'm not really loving it, and I may have to rework the entire thing, which I don't want to do, but if it's not gonna make sense, then I might have to. And here is the final page. It's finally done, it's finished, I'm so happy, and I can actually move on. Guys, it is done. It is finally done. Yes, I'm in the same hair and makeup and outfit minus the earmuffs. Um, ignore that. Uh, mind your business. I could have made a whole separate video doing the cover and how I conceptualized that and went through a million different ideas for that. But for time's sake, here's the final cover. Oh my gosh, yes. Here are all the fill pages, the title page, here's even the inside of the book, you know, where like all that like pattern is. There's a word for that. I've been working, y'all. I've been working. I'm tired, but I'm so, so happy with how it came out. I love it. It's so cute. You know, like the best feeling in the world as an artist is to have your visual in your mind come out in real life and executed the way that you wanted it to be. There's nothing worse than when it doesn't turn out that way. So I'm just so happy that it actually <laughs> looks the way I wanted to. I really hope Brooklyn likes it. I put my blood, sweat, and tears in a girl. Like, it wasn't easy, it was really hard, but I really love it. It's so sweet and I think it really represents her and it represents her imagination and how cool she is and yeah, I really like it. In my next and final video, I will be showing you guys how I print this book. Now this is the part that I've been dreading the most because I actually haven't tested it out to see if it works. Um, I'll get more into it in that video. We're gonna hope. We're gonna we're gonna hope and pray that I can actually get this printed. I'm getting a little overwhelmed about it, but we'll worry about that in the next video, okay? That's not our problem right now. So if you wanna see that video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm almost done, y'all. The project's almost finished. Don't forget to like this video if you like this video. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Also, don't forget to follow me on all my socials. That would be cool, like stay up to date on what I'm doing. And with that, I am done. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, I love you. See you in the next one. Bye, bye.